So before we get started, I want to ask three key questions to everyone. The whole topic is about digitalization today. And what I want to know from you guys is how many of you believe that digitalization decisions should be made based on pricing? How many believe that? Pricing is the reason why. No, we don't believe that. OK, great. How many of you believe that digitalization decisions should be made on SLAs and KPIs? Any takers? Ah, oh, we got some takers there. That's great. And how many of you believe that digitalization should be made on value add and profit sharing? Any takers? Perfect. So I'm speaking to the right people. <clears throat> so let me go into who I am. So my name is Ramisha Motilal, and here's some background about me. So I'm the commercial director of industrial and mining for Gilbarco Vrida Root. And what I do is I champion uh, data analytics for mining. And we, Gilbarco is the pioneer in data analytics uh, for the mining sector. We're based at 63 mines throughout Southern Africa. Again, Gilbarco, who is the leading pioneer in the mining sector for data analytics? Gilbarco. Right. Um, I'm a multi-award winner on various platforms and I'm an author, a speaker and a mum of three. Again, I'm a mum of three. Why is this important to me and why am I here today? So from a professional perspective, it's more about what I do for a living and enjoy, I enjoy what I do and it's about contribution. But as a single mum of three kids, I think it goes beyond that. It's about contributing to a, the longevity of my kids lives making sure that we reduce carbon emissions like our previous speaker said and make a more sustainable environment for the kids that we leave behind and that's going to impact generations and generations the other reason why digitalization and what i do professionally is important to me is we also need to change the landscape of the future workforce that's coming forward and digitalization is so specialized that it can open a whole new segment for our children's children's children if we just handle it right. And we are the decision makers right here that need to onboard the right tools, knowledge, and data to make the decisions going forward. So that's a bit of my professional background and also some personal background history around why I'm here and why is this important to me. So what I want to talk about is three main elements on digitalization. From a professional perspective, I want to tell you a story. I recently came from a mine, I think it's the north of Middleburg. It's a leading coal mine. And when we went there, they've purchased a data analytics um, tool. What was good about them is they used it. It's almost six months into the year. And they can't see the value of it because the right decision makers are not taking this seriously. So that's why I thought, let me come out here and really share some knowledge and stats to our key miners so that you can take this back to your organizations and make the right decisions. So there's potential for this large mine to save millions downstream, create more jobs, and impact their, their bottom line, contribute to our economy. But because of the lack of information, they're unable to drive the data analytics features that they have. And I'm hoping this changes here. Yeah. So I'm going to talk about three different aspects of digitalization. And the first one um, around digitalization trends in the mining sector, how digitalization innovation can improve mining productivity. And one that's really close to me is how digitalization can drive value to South, Africans mine, uh, to South Africa's mining economy. We're in tough times now, and it's really about us looking at the glass half full rather than half empty. And I hope the stats if you take anything back, just take back some stats that you can go back to your managers about and ask the right questions. Can we agree on that? Is, is somebody just going to do that? Good. Okay. So, <clears throat> so some of the key digitalization trends is really about focus on business value and some of the risk drivers. We all know we work in the mining sector, and one of the key elements for us is safety. Safety is the core, reducing carbon emissions, and of course, driving productivity. That's pretty key for us. So what we have to do as miners and professionals in the industry is leverage certain digital capabilities so that we can make the right decisions and put the right performance managers, management processes in place to heal the, be the best results. What we have is when we have digitalization analytics 
in many miles. We have a different concept on the leadership side. If they were not trained, if they were not involved in the buy-in, they don't know how to use digitalization to mobilize it into the workforce. And so we need some real change when it comes to digitalization adoption because this is an amazing country. There is so much potential for us to, to increase value and there's so much of potential of leveraging digitalization in our daily jobs. So that's my plea to everyone. So how can digitalization improve productivity? Obviously, we need some stats to back this up. And one of the key things I've seen at many of these mining companies is that we have, we have data. So if you can see, mining data utilization is one of the biggest problems we have. So this is the most recent study by McKinsey and company. And what does this tell us? It tells us that we have data. It's not captured. So that's one of the shortfalls. Then we have data but it's not streamed and stored. Then we have data that's not accessible to the right decision makers. We have data that's not analyzed, and we have data that's not communicated. And the most important thing is we have data that is not used for decision making. So everybody has segments and silos of data, and it's not brought together for strategic deliverables that companies, mining companies need to drive. So what this McKinsey report tells us is if we can manage data correctly and embrace the right data analytics and digitalization tools, we can have three things that would result in improvements. The first thing is we'll have an optimization of material flow. We'd be able to do predictive maintenance of our current equipment, and we can anticipate failures going forward. And thirdly, we can embrace mechanization and automa automation. Now, everyone's talking about the buzzwords, AI and fought industrial revolution, but nobody's really skilled to take the tools that we have and mobilize it into the future. So what I want to talk you through is some of the pitfalls we have. This is a very important slide, and I'm going to repeat it very slowly over and over. In order for South Africa to drive value in our mining sector, we need to really look at what potential digitalization has. South Africa's mining industry can add 213 billion za by 2026 into our economy if we can invest into th seven different initiatives that's key. So again, South Africa's economy can generate 213 billion za if we can invest in seven digitalization initiatives. 213 billion guys, that will not even fit in this little room. And everyone's looking at jobs, we're looking at cost reductions, we're looking at optimizations, everyone's going on tangents on AI, mechanization, machine learning, but are we doing it strategically? 213 billion. So just let, let's digest that a bit. This slide is extremely busy and I want to come down so that I can talk to you about, about it. So we can't make decisions if we don't have stats to back that up. And what this is telling us from the World Economic Forum, it's revealed that if we can deploy seven digital initiatives, we could help our South African mining sector to unleash 213 billion rand worth of value. So this whole portion here of digital strategies equates 218 billion, uh, 213 billion. I mean, we know that the World Economic Forum, Forum is credible, so then there's seven key initiatives that I want to talk to you about. The first one is, if we drive key initiatives, these seven key initiatives, anyone you want to choose for your organization, this is the potential value you can get. These seven initiatives can contribute to 2% um, increase in GDP, which is 4.4 billion. And these are just these seven. It's not the core intelligence that we can have. What's important is that everyone's talking of buzzwords like um, increasing output, reducing personal costs, and reducing downtime, but nobody has the complete platform of how to do it. So I want to take you through the next slide, which is going to tell us what's happening with our key decision makers. Our key decision makers, we did a survey of multiple leaders in the mining sector, and we went through how do you make decisions? How do you decide what's a priority when it comes to digitalization? What proof of concept um, initiatives do you embrace and how do we scale that? 
And so from all the mining executives that we've interviewed, we found that South African miners are only interested in scaling digital POCs for product service and design de development, production and operations, and also for supply chain and logistics. So those are the three core elements that our leaders embrace. The rest are not looked at. And this brings me to a very busy slide, but I'd like to talk to you guys very slowly through it. How our South African mining companies prioritize technology from a di from digital perspective is really around three key deployment areas. So we have high deployment. We have high deployment for these dark gray elements. So when it comes to cybersecurity, they don't want to be hacked. When it comes to autonomous vehicles, there's a large amount of investment there. And we have an immersive experience. So we're finding that our leaders focus a lot of, let's get the most intelligent machine. Let's remove people from the face of, the, of mines. Let's um, you know, get more cybersecurity so we're not hacked. So those are the key elements that we have high deployment in now. We're not experiencing um, a lot in terms of digital technologies, but the second biggest thing that everyone's focusing on is machine learning, IoT, industrial robotics, and AI. Everybody around this hall is talking about AI, robotics, and, and the rest. So we're seeing that there's medium deployment in that. But the core of 213 billion on seven initiatives lies in these digital technologies that nobody is prioritizing in the mining sector. So what can we do about it? It's key for us to look at what is the big data we have from all the different omnichannels we have or different suppliers. We need to look at how do we visualize this data and basically how do we mobilize it into our organization. So how you would do that is look at what your strategic core elements and drivers are, look at the data you have, and get a channel partner or a partner that can work on building your data analytics to drive your strategic initiatives. If miners do not focus on this low deployment aspect now, they're going to be losing out on a third of the value creation because they're not prioritizing analytics and integrating different um, initiatives, digital initiatives. I really think you'll need to look into this and let's take a moment to absorb it. We're buying fancy vehicles, we, we're driving machine le um, learning and we're driving robotics. We get the data from multiple different suppliers, but we don't know what to do with it. 213 billion can be unleashed if we focus on small, a small element of this. So what is the problem that we're experiencing in-house at the mines? So we have digitalization that's there, we have all the technologies available, but we don't have the skills and the resources available to take this to market. So five choices that we've evaluated. So top, the top global mining companies, we've asked them, okay, so if we give you advanced technology and analytics, what are your challenges and how do we fix these challenges? Of the five uh, challenges they have is, there is no workforce with data, and anal uh, data analytics and visualization. So we have the data, but we can't visualize it. There's no digital production management in our mining space. There's no automation experience. Everybody lacks experience or it's global experience that we're not grooming in-house. And then there's no quality analysis to vet and validate the data so we can make credible decisions. And also there's no AI and machine learning training. So those are the key elements we're having when it comes to our talent and the pipeline and embracing digital technology. So if we go back to our organizations and start having these dialogues, we're gonna be able to have a new generation of people coming in with the right expertise to drive our economy the way it should be. So when it comes to data and anal analysis and visualization, it's important to upskill your existing talent. When it comes to digital production, quality analysis and automation, it's important, it, it's important to get full-time employees here. And of course, for quality analysis, upskill existing in-house talent. And when it comes to AI, we need to create more opportunities for our children's children's children by recruiting externally. What we need to do here is really understand the skills gap we have in our organization 
and what's the appropriate channels and steps we need to take in order to meet the skill requirements. Let's not recruit the same type of people thinking the same way. Let's look at what we're going to do digitally and let's build our talent pipeline to embrace that down the line. So this is an example of Gilbaka Vieira Root's uh, real-time view operation. And it's a simple dashboard that any mine manager, any CEO can take in the, in the tip of his hands and make a decision. That's my production, that's my carbon emissions, that's my total meters drilled, that's my total done, tons moved, that's my tank capacity. And that's what we want to give all our leaders, the power and ability to have data analyzed, visualized, and driven according to the strategic initiative so that they can drive our organizations the right way. Everyone's talking about data analytics, decision science, and these buzzwords. And it's something that Gilbaka really um, implements really well. It's around simplicity, getting simple ways of working in order to drive data analytics. So what happens is at in-house minds, we have a data analyst analyzing data that they cannot conceptualize with algorithms that don't match the industry. When you have somebody like Gilbaka, you can benchmark different sectors, coal, mining, gold, and tell you where you're going wrong and what is the industry norm. So that's when we talk about simplicity. We have a modular system, which means it's, we can rapidly build it. You need less uh, resources available, and it's cost effective. From a cost effective point of view, we don't charge anything for it. We have a profit sharing module, which means we put our money where our mouth is. Give us an opportunity to do your data analytics. We're already on site. Fuel is your second highest um, expense. And test us in how, in how we can save you money. There's an urgency, so we have a rapid response time. And then we also have scalability. So if you're talking of mechanized equipment and later on you're going to autonomous and the rest, we're able to scale according to your strategic requirements. And the biggest thing for us is really about high value. So how do we solve your high value problems with the right data analytics tools? So these are some examples of risk mitigation. So you can have a vehicle that's filling in a refueling bay here and you will have a a test from a check point of view to say that's a legitimate transaction. Then you can have a vehicle that's filling in a, an area that's not geofenced and that will trigger an illegal transaction. So why is this important to us? It's simple hardware triggering responses. What we've noticed is that mines don't take this data and they don't make the right decisions because it's one illegal transaction, one barring that leads to lots of fuel being stolen further down the line. So let's take this data, find out where's the triggers, who are the common operators in the area, is it a common route, is it a section, and that's the data analytics we can provide to you. Another thing is really looking about your good performers and your poor performers. From a visualization point of view, we can see who are your good performance in terms of fuel utilization and who are your poor. You'd be able to tr track trend analysis of how many times there was a shift change with a poor performer or a good performer, um, what's the RPM, what's the fuel usage, and really try and get more data from a performance management perspective there. And the third thing I want to show you is really around fuel runs. When you have a nice data, a good data analytics partner, you're able to build your route of your fuel refills. So you have unoptimized, uh, unoptimized fuel runs when the guy runs out of fuel and he's in the center of the pit. He uses his own mind to navigate the way to the closest refueling station, and that takes him time, money, and reduces productivity. When you have a good data analytics partner that can track the right routes, he'd be able to tell you, if you're in this, uh, if, if you're at this bay, this is the closest route that you need to take. It's going to optimize your fuel run. It's going to save you time and obviously increase productivity. So this is just some of the examples. What I want to talk to you about next is really about how do we scale digitalization. So there's two things you're going to have to walk away from now. The first thing is, what does the workforce need to align to the technologies of choice at Mines? And secondly, what collaboration do you have to do in order to unleash the opportunities you have at your mind? So there's many digital uh, partners out there, Gilbaco being one and the best one, the pioneer in the industry. <laughs> um, 
that you can collaborate with and contribute to the 213 billion that awaits you. And you don't need big investments. Just make the right decisions, get the right data, and let's drive the right strategy across. Now I would like to close with one last question. How many of you now will base a decision on data analytics on price? Anyone? No? Good, we've changed the room. How many of you will now base your data analytics decision on SLAs and KPIs? Okay, I'm happy with that. And the third one is, when you walk away today, how many of you now will base your decisions on data analytics on profit sharing and value add, downstream value add? Brilliant. My job here is done. <laughs> Thank you so much. It was a pleasure being with you guys. And now I have a few questions I'd like to ask everyone. So the first one is, what is the value that we can contribute to the South African economy if we embrace data analytics? First hand up. Ah, oh, I saw. <laughs> In the back, sorry, with the maroon. 213 million. Well done. Great. So you win a copy of my signed book. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. The next one is quite a simple one. Who is the pioneer in the mining industry when it comes to data analytics? <laughs> Caroline, I'm going to be cheating, yes. Gil Barker, congratulations. <laughs> there you go, here's your book for you. Thank you. This one's quite a simple one. How many children do I have? <laughs> Three. <laughs> That's great. And there was more questions. I have two more questions to ask you guys. How many digital initiatives are there? Go ahead. Seven. Great. <laughs> um, can I ask you to take the book from behind? Well done. <clears throat> and now you are so great that I need to ask you one more question. Uh, two more questions to make this exciting. Um, Okay, it's going to be around <clears throat> So let me think what would be a, an easy one for you guys to get what were the three topics that I had to cover how many topics did I cover initially? <laughs> we can't we can't use tech. Sorry. How many topics did I cover when I opened with for the agenda guys? Three. Okay. <laughs> okay, you got a book there. Um, and the last one is going to be um, around digitalization. So, what deployment category did digitalization fall under? So, you had high deployment, you had medium deployment, and you had low deployment. Low. Yay, we have a winner. Thank you. <laughs> it has been an absolute honor to be addressing you guys. And I am so glad that you guys are as passionate as I am. Please join us at Gilbarco Stand at Hall 5A05. And please come get a copy of my sign book. Come meet us. Come talk to us about technologies and how we can help you guys contribute to the $213 billion that awaits us. Thank you.